It's one of those stories that warms the heart despite the very potential for tragedy and loss. The tale of a kidnapped newborn baby, a desperate mother, and two hospital officials determined to solve the case. It's a case that had led nowhere under a police investigation. Then an apparently innocent visit to the office of a hospital social worker changed everything, igniting an investigation by two dedicated women prepared to go beyond the call of duty. Govan headed to Kabecha for this remarkable story of baby Ulutando. Kabecha in the Eastern Cape. An idyllic seaside location popular with tourists. In contrast, the new Brighton township on the city's outskirts is one of its most impoverished and violent areas, where life is a daily struggle. In November last year, it was the scene of a shocking kidnapping involving a newborn baby. A crime that may have well gone unsolved were it not for the heroics of two vigilant hospital workers. South African health workers often make the headlines for the wrong reasons, so it's easy to forget the many who go beyond the call of duty. One family, though, found some of these heroes in this hospital. Doran Ginza Hospital is one of the busiest in Kabecha, often the only facility that's accessible to communities desperate for critical health care and social services. Staff here are under constant pressure, no better demonstrated than in the hospital's maternity ward, where 8,000 babies are delivered each year. Most of the time we serve the underprivileged. We have quite a number of people coming in and out on a daily basis. People coming from surrounding farms and sometimes as far as the rural areas. <laughs> it's in this high pressure environment that social worker Portia Machinana has worked for over four years. Being a social worker is very rewarding. If you love seeing the change in people's lives. How many people do you stay with at home? Her office is always a hive of activity. But in June this year, what she thought was an ordinary day would embroil her in an incident that would later make national headlines. An elderly couple walked into my office they introduced themselves as the grandparents of a seven-month-old baby that belonged to their son. The grandparents said they needed help to apply for the baby's birth certificate because the child's mother refused to register at Home Affairs. As they weren't themselves the parents, Portia had to carefully review the case and verify the documents. I need to check whether this child was indeed born here in Dora. So they took out um, the road to health clinic card, the booklet of the child, and then the discharge summary. The road to health card is a booklet meant to track a baby's development, including its health checkups. And the discharge summary is a security document verifying that a patient has been cleared to leave the hospital premises. Portia found concerning discrepancies in both documents crucial information seemed to have been fraudulently altered using a correction pen. Had you ever seen anything like that before? No. The baby's name was tipexed off and was written with a pen. The date of birth of the child was tipexed off and then a new date of birth was written. The mother's details are erased with the tipex and then were rewritten with a pen. And I knew something was wrong. Portia had stumbled upon the first evidence in a sinister crime. In November last year, Nonedo Jali gave birth to a healthy baby boy at Doranginza. Her third child, she named him Olotando, meaning born out of love. 
da da kakhulu wancanca hayi umntana olala kamhandi uvela lala lokho ingathi into nanga yasiyo yalala her first few days with baby olotando were joyful but sadly short lived while in the maternity ward, Nonedo met a woman who introduced herself as Asanda, saying she was a patient expecting her first child in just a few months. She took a special interest in Olotando. Aduna five months pregnant. When Nonedo and baby Olotando were discharged, Asanda offered to carry her bags and accompany her home. Unaware of the coming tragedy, the two walked to a nearby shopping mall so Nonedo could withdraw money for a taxi home. She handed her baby to Asanda before briefly turning away. Nonedo searched frantically for Asanda and a missing baby, but they were nowhere to be found. Weeks turned to months, and the Jali family waited for news about baby Olutando's return. They were on edge, and they were too scared to leave this house in case the police arrived with a new lead. As Nonedo's nightmare was unfolding, Portia was digging deeper into the documents provided by the two strangers who'd sat in her office claiming to be the mystery baby's grandparents. They listed the baby's biological mother as Amatle Sigam, a patient Portia couldn't find in any of the hospital's maternity records. Were the alarm bells going off? I was mindful of the fact that I don't want to accuse anyone and I wanted to get to the bottom of what was happening. I immediately knew that is a red flag for me. DJ3, good day. Administration clerk Carmila Eagles has kept watch over the hospital's patient records for more than 20 years. Portia asked her to help investigate whether an Amatle Sigam had given birth at the hospital. Carefully examining the documents and cross-referencing the hospital's birth records, she discovered that Sigam had never been a patient in the maternity ward. So, if Sigam wasn't the baby's mother, who was? Buried in a file, Carmilla found a crucial clue. So, when I took the discharge paper, and I turned it around into the light, and there was a name. The baby's mother was Nonedo Jali. Despite seven months of anxiety and trauma, Nonedo had been living in hope that she'd one day be reunited with her child. You must get the wall of fame for you, because this is big, we just cracked this case. Mm. So determined were Portia and Kamila to place the final pieces of the puzzle that they tracked down Nonedo Jali and immediately drove to a home in New Brighton. At the house, Nonedo and her mother detailed the shopping center kidnapping orchestrated by a woman who'd introduced herself as Asanda. This, Portia would later conclude, was the Amatle Sigam named as Olotando's mother on the forged hospital records. I was shocked. I couldn't even contain my emotions. I remember looking at Camilla. She was shocked as well. I said to them, I have found your baby. The baby is safe. But what of the two people who'd come to Portia claiming to be Olotando's paternal grandparents? It appears they too were victims in this shameful tale. Did you know how you were going to approach the elderly lady who, was, who took care of the little boy for seven months? She was shocked. 
So she kept on saying, no, this is my um, son's baby. The girlfriend stays with us. She was indeed pregnant. She was crying uncontrollably. I felt that they were also victims because I've seen how loving they were towards the, the, the boy. Sigam was arrested and charged with kidnapping and fraud and has appeared at the new Brighton Magistrates Court. The case is ongoing. I don't think, to be quite honest, that she was ever pregnant. In June this year, Nonedo and baby Olotando were finally reunited. was crying, <sighs> kissing the baby. Finally, she was holding her baby. So that was a very emotional moment that I'm so glad I was a part of. Yabulela, utiko mababa kwenye ayansi yonki nto na kuabanye abantu babengoshlobo. Thanks for watching. Why not drop us a comment below? We love reading your opinions. Remember, you can now access Carte Blanche stories anytime, anywhere, even offline. Carte Blanche, the podcast, is now available on all major podcast platforms. So be sure to hit that follow or subscribe button and be part of our growing online family.